and welcome to the episode 315 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we'll see why Paul McCartney decided to change the instrument the first time, how Rubber Soul was completed, and how George Harrison did with his first production job. On the 11th of November 1956, 14-year-old Paul McCartney watched Lonnie Donegan live at the Liverpool Empire. Caught by the skiffle craze, Paul decided to quit learning trumpet to switch to guitar. Shortly after the concert, he traded the trumpet his father gave him for his 14th birthday with an acoustic guitar, after asking permission to his father. Four years later, in 1960, Paul was engaged with the other four Beatles, Pete Bass on drums, George Harrison and John Lennon sharing with him guitar playing and singing duties, and Stu Sickley from bass, on the stage of the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing residency in town. In 1961, the Beatles had become a quartet, with Paul McCartney changing again instrument and switching to bass, to substitute Stuart Sutcliffe. On this date, they were busy with an evening at the Aintree Institute in Liverpool, for another event organised by Brian Kelly. After the performance, though, the lads headed to the Liverpool Jazz Society to celebrate the success of Operation Big Beat see episode 314 for more information. The party was organised by Sam Leach, the promoter of the Big Beat event. Another Hamburg residency in 1962, with the Beatles now featuring their definitive lineup, with Ringo Starr on drums. For the eleventh straight night, they performed alone and with Little Richard at the Star Club. Before switching to the studio part of the episode, so to speak, let me remind you that if you want to do anything to help me producing more music-related content, you can check www.simonmas.com support at the end of the episode. God only knows what I'd be without your comments, your shares, and any donation you might want to send my way. Thank you! On the 11th of November 1965, the Beatles completed their new album, Rubber Soul. The day at the EMI Studios started with a mixing session between 4 and 5.30 pm, during which producer George Martin mixed the word in mono and stereo. Then, with the arrival of the Beatles at 6 pm, the band and the staff started a 13-hour non-stop session to complete the last songs for Rubber Soul. The new album needed three more songs, John Lennon contributed with Girl, Paul McCartney with You Won't See Me, and Wait, a leftover from the Help album recording sessions, was literally pulled off the shelf and worked on from the point where the Fabs had left the recording on the 17th of June 1965, as detailed in episode 168. One more song was touched upon before the end of the session. I'm Looking Through You was finally completed to the band's satisfaction by 7 am, and Rubber Soul just needed a final mixing session to be completed. Three years down the line, in 1968, another round of sessions was completed. We're talking about the initial sessions for Jackie Lomax's Is This What You Want, produced by George Harrison for Apple Records. It was on this date that the tenth and final recording session for the album took place at the Sound Recorder Studios in Los Angeles, California. During this session, George met electronic musician Bernie Krause, who had come to the studio to record a new instrument on some of the songs of the album, the Moog 3 synthesizer. At the end of the session, Krause demonstrated the possibilities of the instrument to Harrison, who was intrigued by it and decided to bring home one Moog himself. Krause's demonstration was recorded and later edited down and released as No Time or Space in George's second solo album, Electronic Sound. 
Time to close shop today. Tomorrow we'll see how a nasty flu will force the Beatles to change their plans. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.